The Life and Sad Ending of Sonny James Sonny James was born Jimmy Hugh Loden on May 1, 1928, to Archie Lee Pop Loden and Della Burleson Loden, who operated a 300-acre farm outside Hackleburg, Alabama. His parents were amateur musicians, and his sister Thelma Lee Loden Holcomb also played instruments and sang from an early age. By age three he was playing a mandolin and singing and was dubbed Sonny Boy. In 1933, the family appeared on a radio audition which resulted in their being offered a regular Saturday slot on Muscle Shoals, Alabama radio station WMSDAM. About this time the parents volunteered to raise an Alabama girl named Ruby Palmer, and soon Ruby was also part of the musical group, and the singing Loden family later billed as Sonny Loden and the Southerners, was soon playing theaters, auditoriums, and schoolhouses throughout the southern United States. To this point, the musical appearances had been a part-time effort for the family, as they returned after each gig or tour to work the family farm. After a few years, the father decided they were professional enough to immerse themselves into the field full-time, so the father leased out the farm and they took a daily spot on radio station KLCN, where they provided early morning accompaniment for the area's early risers. On September 9, 1950, his career was interrupted by the Korean War when his Alabama Army National Guard unit was activated. After military service in Korea, James moved to Nashville, where he spent a week staying with Chet Atkins and his wife. James had roomed with Atkins years earlier in Raleigh, North Carolina when they were playing at the same radio station. Atkins invited Capitol Records executive Ken Nelson to join them for dinner. James stated, after dinner, Chet and first began woodshedding on our guitars. We played a few songs I had written. Then Chet turned to Ken and said, what do you think, Ken? And Ken said, I'd like to record him. Nelson asked him to drop his last name professionally believing there were already several musicians named Loden, Loudon, or Ludden, and that James would be easier to remember. The smallest children can remember Sonny James. So he released his first studio record as Sonny James. While appearing on Louisiana Hayride, he met musician Slim Whitman. James' performance on stage playing a fiddle and singing brought a strong crowd response and Whitman invited him to the front for his new touring band. James stayed with Whitman's group for only two months when Whitman felt he had to do some club work to keep up his income to be able to pay his band. The Loden family had only appeared in schoolhouses and such and Sonny agreed to stay on for a few shows until Whitman could find his replacement. For the remainder of his career, he never played a club performance. Over the next few years, he had several songs that did reasonably well on the country music charts and he continued to develop his career with performances at live country music shows. He also appeared on radio, including Big D Jamboree, before moving to the all-important new medium, television, where he became a regular performer on ABC's Ozark Jubilee in Springfield, Missouri beginning in October 1955. Following his long streak of number one hit, James has also remembered for his 1975 number six songs a little bit south of Saskatoon that was in the 1977 Paul Newman hockey comedy Slapshot. In late 1956 James released Young Love, a 45 revolutions per minute single for which he would forever be remembered. As the first teenage country crossover single, it topped both the U.S. country and pop music charts from January to February 1957. Record sales could have been higher if Capitol Records had anticipated the exposure on popular music charts. They had ordered only enough copies of the record to satisfy the anticipated country music demand and were therefore unable to supply most of the requests for records. The track peaked at number 11 in the U.K. singles chart. It sold well over one million copies and was awarded a gold disc. Dubbed the Southern Gentleman because of his polite demeanor, he gained more exposure with an appearance on the popular Ed Sullivan Show and the Bob Hope Show. 
thus began a seven-year search for a sound that gave him a lasting career. Two more years at Capitol Records didn't produce it and they parted ways in 1959. James signed with National Recording Corporation and then stints with DOT, RCA, his second time with Capitol, and later with Columbia, Monument, and Dimension. In 1962 he returned to his roots and became a member of the Grand Ole Opry and a year later signed again with Capitol Records. From 1964 to 1972 he was a dominant force in country music. James and his Southern Gentlemen appeared on the major TV shows during that period including Ed Sullivan, Andy Williams, Glenn Campbell, Jimmy Dean, Mike Douglas, Merv Griffin, The Joey Bishop Show, was a multi-time guest on Hee Haw, also on The Johnny Cash Show and made minor singing appearances in four motion pictures. On August 15, 1964, James made his first appearance with a vocal group that had been together for five years. The group consisted of Lynn Bone first tenor, Gary Robble second tenor, Dwayne West, baritone, and Glenn Huggins, bass. These four young men had started singing as freshmen at Eastern Nazarene College in Quincy, Massachusetts, in 1959, and in September 1962 they transferred to a sister college in Nashville, Tennessee. Sixteen months later in January 1964, they replaced the Jordanaires as the Grand Ole Opry Quartet. James felt he had found the combination that propelled him into his second career that sound he had been seeking for seven years. So these 21 and 22-year-old men, along with James' multi-talented bass player Milo Liggett, became the Southern Gentleman and joined 36-year-old Sonny James. Two months later, James had his first number one Billboard hit since Young Love, topping the country charts with the song he co-wrote with Bob Tubert, You're the Only World I Know. His next five releases peaked on the Billboard country charts at 2, 1, 3, 1, and 2. With his musical style now refined and his sound on records and on personal appearances produced to be immediately identifiable, Sonny James was set to begin what became his legendary streak of 16 straight number one single, an uncontested record which no other solo recording artist has surpassed in any genre. Beginning in 1967 with Need You and ending with Here Comes Honey Again in 1971, James recorded 16 straight number one country singles. His career number one total was 26 the last coming with 1974's Is It Wrong. During his career had 72 charted releases. In 1973 James also helped launch the solo career of Marie Osmond, producing and arranging her first three albums, including her smash hit, Paper Roses. In July 1957, Sonny married Doris Schrode in Dallas, Texas. In the spring of 1984, Sonny and Doris quietly retired to their home in Nashville, Tennessee. He came home to Hackleburg during the first annual Neighbor Day Festival on April 20, 2002, and continued attending the festival every other year. During April 25, 2009, festival, he recognized the 100th birthday of the town of Hackleburg on the main stage. James died on February 22, 2016 in Nashville, Tennessee, at the age of 87. He died of natural causes at Nashville's Alive Hospice, according to a statement on his official website. He is buried at Cedar Tree Cemetery, in Hackleburg, Alabama. His death left a great deal of grief for his fans.